She's free to um, to say that she is clean, to say that uh, she has never committed an act of corruption. So I do not blame her in, in any way. You have no reason to accuse anyone of corruption until um, you have uh, got the courts to to try such a person and confirm that she's indeed guilty. If you accuse me of being a rapist, for example, now, and I've never lifted any woman's skirt, I have a right to take you to court and um, seek redress. And that's what she's done. And you know, a few years back, I remember clearly that Diazani wanted to come to Nigeria to defend herself here. She got her lawyer here in Nigeria to, um, <clears throat> to, to serve a notice of her desire to come and defend herself here. Our attorney general frustrated it. Our attorney general felt at that time that since the London Metropolitan Police had seized her passport, that they were going to find her um, guilty. So what they did was to, to say that, look, wait in, a, wait in the UK. Don't come here. So she frustrated her attempt to come here and defend herself because he felt that the, uh, over there they will be able to find cast iron evidence of corruption and put her in jail the way they jailed James Ibori. But it is clear now that the cases are different. Um, they will never even take you before a judge unless they are very sure that they will secure conviction. They are not like us. At the end of the day, London Metropolitan Police has not been able to piece together the evidence sufficient to take the journey before a court of law. This is where it, uh, this is the true state of, of things. So you can say all kinds of things about her. You can convict her associates. It's not the same thing as getting her convicted. Some of your associates could actually be corrupt. But it may not necessarily mean that you are corrupt or that you are guilty. Because you must find enough evidence before conviction can happen. We also saw O.J. Simpson's case. When that glove did not fit. And the, the lawyer kept saying, if it doesn't fit, you can't convict. You must acquit. That's how O.J. Simpson, everyone was convinced that O.J. Simpson killed his wife. But the law does not think the way we think. So at the end of the day, the Ezani is clean until proven guilty. That is what the law says. You can't convict someone by word of mouth. You must put that person on trial and get him convicted. We've seen so many people that the FCC took before the courts and they were freed. So as far as I'm concerned, yes, I read a lot about her. But the same way I read a lot about other people, including Dimeji Bankole. But they took them to court and they were afraid. Oh, we kill. Uh, we, uh, I would also like you to react to this. We heard um, or we saw the acting chairman of the EFCC, Brian Mago, saying indicting the UK as part of the foreign partners that have been frustrating uh, the trial of Dizani Alisa Madriki. Brian Mago says, well, this is five years. If you're not ready, it shouldn't, this case shouldn't take this long. You see, the, uh, you heard me when I said that when she wanted to come here to defend herself, it was our own attorney general that said, no, stay there. Mm. Because she, he felt that they stood a better chance of getting her convicted uh, uh, over, there. over there than here. Maybe he thought, okay, given the nature of her judiciary that she may work free. How many of the Politically exposed persons, wealthy people, have they succeeded in jailing? 
they have a, a much better record with Yahoo Boys than with all these big, big uh, people. Have they put, look at the Accountant General, for example. Have they succeeded in securing the Accountant General's conviction? The other day, what did we hear, Volaji? Uh, mm. They said that his confessional statement was missing. You, you remember? Yeah. So we have a peculiar case here in our mm. country. All right. Well, I think uh, the blame for this should be on EFCC. And uh, we have always said it. Media trial of uh, people by EFCC. Uh, what uh, the Israelis is thinking a, a sweet on is the fact that uh, in the portal of uh, EFCC, uh, there were some reports there, which were picked by regular newspapers and used. And uh, see, if you are not sure or you don't have enough evidence, I don't see the basis for going to town with information. Because well, if you go to town with information, when you are not sure, when you don't have enough evidence, you are also preparing the person you are investigating to cover up his or her tracks. And it's not supposed to be the case. If you actually investigate someone, before you come to town, you have information, you say anything about that person, you must have your evidence. Mm -hmm. This is standing on a mirror high ground today because she feels that she, nobody has indicted her. The court has she has not been taken to court or anything. And you are saying she did, she did that. She has the right to say no, she didn't do that. You are, you are impugning her character. And that's why she went to court. Whether it's going to succeed or not, well, that remains for the court to decide. But for the fact is that EFC has, is, has a major, major indictment on this matter. They have to be indicted because you can't go to town without enough information about someone and saying this person is corrupt without even going to court to, sue that, to take that person to court. It's very unfortunate. So, whether it will, it will fly or not, I don't know, but the fact is that EFC is at fault here. And that is because you say you, 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 you got some things from her, you made certain cases of corruption against her, but you have not taken her to court. You are not taken her to court for, for, for all these things you say, for this corruption or enrichment. So, if she's not saying you, have a, you are impugning her character today, she doesn't have any <laughs> she has justification for saying that. All right, so Bikil, go for what the explanation you gave. Are there any lessons for the EFCC to take away from this from this situation? No, they, they, they have no lesson to learn. Mm. This is, they have a history of doing this, and they are not prepared to stop. Sometimes they simply play to the gallery. I'm not saying the designer has not stolen money. I don't have the evidence. I will also not say, oh, she's a thief when I don't have evidence. You know? Um, look at Fayoshi. They were making so much noise. Oh, close the land borders. Do this. Fayoshi must not escape. So, by himself. He submitted himself to them. Mm -hmm. he, even, he even designed a t-shirt and said, EFCC, come and catch me. He went there on foot with, uh, I think, the week at that time. But yeah, since I'm making all the noise that I have uh, uh, stolen money, I'm telling you that I will not run away. And to make good display not to run away, he didn't wait for them to come and pick him. He went straight to their office. What has happened since that time? They were, they, they were on this matter. They were getting close to judgment time mm -hmm. when the EFCC lawyer fought with the judge. Mm -hmm. And they had to change the judge. Have it? Yeah. They changed the judge. Ideally, given the fact that so many witnesses had testified, mm -hmm. you would expect that, okay, they will continue from where the um, former judge began. They said they, they should start uh, afresh. the case afresh. When you do that, a lot of the witnesses will not come back. That is what usually happens. How do you then secure conviction? Because what you are saying is, okay, all of all, all things have passed away. Some of those uh, testimonies, uh, they are no longer relevant. You want to start the case afresh. Many of the, the, the witnesses will probably have been compromised. They will have reached out to them. They will not come back. This is the truth. I'm saying the truth, and that was why some of us opposed this silly suggestion that they should show uh, the presidential recent life. Oh, you want it to a person to is a witness is looking at camera in his face, and you think he will be witness of the truth, so that they can't go and kill him in his house. He's coming out of 
the court they are waiting for him. No one, no one will be foolish to do that now. If I will change my testimony once it is clear that you have put a camera in my face, mm -hmm. not many Nigerians will have that courage. Absolutely. The people who are to testify against um, um, uh, uh, former police, um, uh, this investigator, oh, yeah, yeah. they are lawyer to request that the, the, their testimonies should be taken in secret. Is that not for a reason? So politicians who spend all that money to win election, some of them kill people to win election, you want uh, to televise the, 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 <laughs> the testimony of key witnesses so that politicians can go and waste them. People sometimes just take decisions without thinking deep. So you, this is the thing. You know EFCC is starting again. They are starting again. They said 28 governors are on their watch list. <coughs> just after the May 29, as usual. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, nothing is going to come out of yeah. this. It is the usual practice. And that's why when he said they can there's no lesson they can learn because mm -hmm. over the years people have we are used them. to that. Yeah, we are used to it. Media trial, go to town with uh, information out there that this person has done this. At the end of the day, no conviction. No, the person will be allowed to go free. Exactly. Uh, look, the generations of 2007. Mm -hmm. How many of them are in jail? Uh, yes. How many All of them? Governors. Yeah. All those governors. <laughs> 2007. Yes. Uh, the ones that left office 2007. Yes. How many of them are in yeah. jail? If you know what we've read about some of them, mm -hmm. I've seen a judge in giving, in, in giving his ruling against the FCC tongue lash them thoroughly that they don't do diligent prosecution. That was former Minister of Works, Hassan Lawal. Mm -hmm. They took him to court. They didn't have the evidence. You just somebody will just uh, come provide a petition. You start putting someone on trial based on a petition written by another person without sufficient evidence. At the end of the day, the judge said, "Come on, what what kind of shoddy investigation is this?" In setting Hassan Lawa, the late Hassan Lawa free, he tongue lashed them thoroughly. I remember even the former uh, CGN said. Prosecution is like building a house from the base. If you do not build it properly, it will crumble. And no judge will help you to build your house, to build your prosecution. You must, it, the judgment will be based on how much the work you have done. All right, gentlemen, let's see how uh, this goes. Now let's move on to our next story.